So he's effectively going to a Belgian Disneyland, but our Mickey Mouse setup <laughs> causes him to, to completely break down with a completely avoidable injury. Yep. It's an avoidable injury. That's, but that's what makes me absolutely furious. Yes. Welcome back to Yahoo Footballing Weekly with me, Neil Humphreys. And me, Chia Han Kyung. And, and now, go on. Yep, go on. we're going to talk local football. And I know you all really love talking about local football. You've been sending everything. So many emails, um, TikTok comments, Twitter comments, uh, YouTube comments. Everything came in. It's amazing. Yeah. All because of the AFF Cup debacle oh, yeah. from Singapore's point of view. It's over now. The tournament is over. Congratulations, Singapore, Thailand. Correct. Singapore Seven. went home before the semi final. Oh, yep. Thailand went home with the trophy. Yep. Seventh, you know, seventh trophy. And we yep. went home with a record number of comments, oh. right? Yeah. YouTube, TikTok, it exploded. Facebook, wherever, all coming in. We are, oh, thank you so much for commenting. I mean, some of you all gave excellent comments, and we would just like to. Read out, yeah, read them out, them. and then maybe you know, y'all, we can comment on it. So we got this, this guy Matthew Lee came in from in the on the YouTube, quite 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 a long comment. But essentially, he says it's not about racial or population representative representation. If talent is not developed, having a talent pool in the majority race means nothing. It doesn't add to your pool of best players. If the best players are Malays, Indians, or naturalized foreigners, so be it. As long as they have the passion, the right development, the right tactics, the right support, they can still beat anyone in ASEAN. So I, I think the, 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 the arguments for improving Singapore football, you know, they can be split into two uh, major groups. One is improve the organisation, improve mm -hmm. the coaches. And one, which is your, your view, is to imp bring in more... more Widen the pool of players. Well, it's not my view. It's just I mean, common sense. Common sense, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, essentially, he's he's on this side saying, you know, the the the, the coaches have to be better, the system has to be better, and then no matter how how big the size of uh, the pool of talents we have, we still can make it good. But here's where I wonder: every coach and every organization will want a wider pool of players. Of yeah, to to get to to to, to get your as as a big as wide a net as possible. You can't say, well, don't care about eighty percent of, of the of the group here. Mm. I agree. And yeah. I actually agree with Matthew's point. Nobody's saying that the coaching cannot improve, yeah. but you do pick the best from the talent pool. Mm. But if the talent pool is only twenty five percent of a population to yeah. begin with, in a country that only has five million, yeah. Your talent pool is like that. You're never going to beat Thailand. You're never going to even beat Malaysia or Indonesia again. Yeah. So, you know, we shouldn't get hung up on this race or that race. Just try to be a bit more dispassionate. Take the emotion out of the argument and just look at it maturely and as objectively as we can and say, this is our population of Singapore. If we can only take this much of the population for our potential national team, 25%, we are not going to qualify for anything. Yeah. That's all we're saying. And unless we get a manager like Lionel Scaloni yeah. or for Argentina or for or for that matter, um, Jose Moreno, Eric Ten Hag or Jurgen Klopp for our, for, as our national team head coach, we are, getting, we are not getting them, definitely. And then... It, the, even the best coach will want to see well how much talent base I have and how can I you know get the best out of the white group. That's okay, it. I'll be even more blunt. Jose Mourinho mm. is offered the job to take over Singapore manager technical director. Money is no object. They'll oh. pay him anything. Mm. He says, fantastic. Tell me about Singapore. Okay, it's a Chinese majority country. Fantastic. I love the Chinese. But the Chinese don't play. He, he quits straight away. I don't want the job. Yeah, but we're going to pay you fifty million pounds, one million pounds a week. But your majority does not play. You're giving me this much of the talent pool to work with. Yeah. I can't do anything. Yeah, that's the problem. In fact, the money you pay to Jose Mourinho will be better spent. There you go. Getting the white white base to play. Get the grassroots up and running. Exactly. I couldn't agree more. Right, let's move on. We got so many comments. Again, thank you. Ryan Lim says, if you keep doing this things the same way, you keep getting the same type of results. Major changes need to be made to the management, the coaches and the players, especially the players. Why do I keep seeing the same players? Well, we kind of just answered that one. <laughs> be brave, give the young players a chance and retire all the old ones. What do you think of that? 
there's good, there's bad. Obviously, if you if you give all the young players a chance, you must expect them to lose and lose often. You mm. don't say, oh, we give the youngsters a chance and then you expect them to win straight away. Mm. You, you because because youngsters will, will will struggle against the senior and more experienced side like Thailand or Vietnam or Indonesia or Malaysia. You cannot say that oh, because we brought in youngsters, youngsters will definitely be better. Mm. You must expect them to lose. If you if you if you are willing to let them lose for a few years and continue to keep faith with the youngsters, there might be a chance. And in fairness to the Football Association mm. of Singapore and the Singapore Premier League, mm. that is the whole reason for the Young Lions' existence is to create a pipeline of young talent to go through the Young Lions and then hopefully make it to the national team. And on top of that, the Premier League introduced age quotas, yep. didn't they, a few years back to insist that every team in the Premier League, how many was it? Was it four? Had to have three or four players yeah. under the age of 23 mm. to ensure a pipeline for young players. I come back to my point, despite that, they don't have enough resources exactly. to begin with. It's the, the base is already small. The talent pool, if you see that the current players are struggling, it's because they can't get enough of the youngsters. They can't get enough good quality youngsters to replace them already. So if you want to replace the full team with all the youngsters, you must expect them to lose. Yeah. And lose often first. If you say, oh, we sure win straight away, then... then don't 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 bother. Don't don't change the thing. Don't change the whole thing. And is our Kiasuism really ready to accept that? Because yep. the Germans changed their model and they lost. The Belgians changed their model initially, and they, there was a period of transition. Yep. English, for a long period of transition, the English youth teams had to really work at it before yep. they developed yep. the talent pool they've got now. Yep. Are we willing to accept that kind of short-term yep. pain for the so, long-term game? So it's up to you, fans. Your your call, not 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 the the FAS call. Yeah, we know what the problems are. What's the next one? Yep. Erwan. Well, Erwan Sur Suratiman. Thank you. Uh, he said, just by looking at the Young Lions' participation in the Singapore Premier League, reflect the shallowness of knowledge among the people in FAS. After years in the SPL, our young players develop an immunity to losing and trashing. It sucked the hunger and motivation out of them. This one says the young ones are to blame. Yeah, this is a fascinating point for me because we have talked about this so many times. The Young Lions is caught in this vicious circle, isn't it? This catch-22 situation. They are set up to ensure that young players, and only young players, play every single week. Mm. But they get thrashed because they don't have any elite players and they don't really have any foreign players. Mm. So the alternative is what? You spread them out and put them in the other teams. Mm. Then they don't play regularly. Yep. They sit on the bench. Why? Because the other teams have senior players and good foreign players. So you either play them and they get whacked, or they join a good team and they sit on the bench. Or this is the problem. Or later, as we will, we will, we will explore, FAS called another way to, to, to counter the problem. We'll get to yeah. that later. Sounds like a familiar problem, but yeah, <laughs> familiar solution. All right, what have we got next? Red Punk mm. says, now I like this one. Most are playing futsal in rented courts. That's a key word for me. Rented courts and public fields rather than going pro. I don't think there are many public fields left, which I'll get to. Yep. Earning a living is more important. Now, this is important to me. We have talked about this many times. Pitch allocation, playing surfaces in Singapore are becoming smaller and fewer than ever before. Yep. In the 25 years I've lived in Singapore, I have seen the working man's game become a middle-class sport. Yep. You have to rent futsal pitches. You have to rent those cages. You have to, to join the football academies, private football academies. Right, or you have to sign up for academies mm. just to play. When I first arrived in 1996, I could still find green patches yep. to you play. You can play in the void deck. I used to play at Orchard Road at yeah. Bras Bazaar. Yeah. I used to play at Bishan Park. I used to play all over. Mm. Now you're running out of places. Farrah Park is gone. Uh, Turf City at uh, Bukitima yeah. is Bishan, going. Bishan Park now got dog, dog parks instead of... Yeah, we have lovely dog parks. Yeah. We have lovely skating parks. We have lovely park connectors for no, cyclists. We don't have football fields. And joggers. We don't have football fields. We have taken a working man's game and made it a middle-class sport like tennis, like sailing, where you have to pay a lot mm. for the facilities. That's what we have to fix. And the problem is the middle class are more concerned, like he said, earning money, earning a living is more important for the middle class. Great point. And and that and and they'll play football, yes. Yeah. But that's for their recreation. Great point. 
I'm a, let's pretend I'm not. Let's pretend I'm a wealthy Kiasu Singaporean parent. I've got a talented kid playing sport. I say, F I've got the money. Football academy, tennis academy, sailing academy, swimming academy. Where do I go? If I've got the money, it's obvious, right? Yeah. I'm going to pick tennis. the swimming. I'm going to pick the tennis. I'm going to pick the sailing. They are individual sports. There is more chance of success. But even let's say, okay, I want to give the best. I want to. I want my my to fulfill my my uh, kids' uh, dreams of being a footballer. Yes, go on, join the football academy. But you know, just play for fun, win a few private tournaments, and then after that, continue your studies, please. Yeah. And then, and then I'll go one step further. Okay, I'll let you keep playing, okay? As long as you balance your studies, okay? Okay, not bad. Huh? Some teams are interested. NS. There you go. Gone. <laughs> and it's all over again. Yes. See, these are the things we have to look at. A lot at. of problems. A lot, a lot of problems. problems. What have we got next? Toast Talk says, so, this is aimed at me last week when I talked about we need more Chinese players to play. So, we're going to put a Chinese player in as a token player. For representation, I hope not. We should pick players based on their merits, regardless of race. We agree with that. We agree with that. <laughs> we but agree with but that. But if you don't widen the base, how are you going to get the talents? I always joke that I used to feel so sorry for Gabriel Kwak, the Singapore gold chart Chuan. You go back further, Lim Tong Hai, Stephen Tan. Yeah. They've always got to be the great Chinese hope, you know, the, the great representative of Singapore football. And, and that's why Too all much. This, this accusation of tokenisms come in. Yeah. And I think... Once you really widen the base, there'll be a, a slew of good Chinese players who could probably make the national Course. team. And then you won't, you won't get this accusation of tokenism. It is the problem is now there's too few of the Chinese players coming through. And that's, that's why you always got one, two maximum. Or even, yeah. And, and, that, and that's why people are saying, ah, you just put that because you want to make up the, 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 the make out the thing, which is not entirely true. And the next comment from a celebrity would say it all. Absolutely. Mm. And just briefly on that, if you're a young Singaporean Chinese footballer and you want to make a career in football, go play for Malaysia. <laughs> they got Dominic, loads of Dominic Tang. Dominic Tang. Yeah. You see? You see? All right. Nice quote to finish it off, which, as you said correctly, sums up what we were saying last week. Celebrity viewer, the legendary actor himself, Lim K. Tong, yeah. said, he listened to our podcast and said, Totally agree. The greatest Singapore soccer team was the one of the early 1960s. Eurasian goalkeeper Wilfred Skinner, Chinese and Malay strikers Kwa Kim Sui and Majid Arif. What players they were. Yep. Captain Lee Kok Seng, the swift Ali Asta, the impenetrable Freddie Chin and the incomparable Rahim Omar et al. Magnificent multiracial team. And that's what we said last week. Team. That looked like Singapore. Exactly. That's the way it's got to be. How do we make it happen? Let us know. Send all your thoughts and comments too. Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. And thanks again for all your comments. Keep them coming. Now, moving on swiftly. Ilhan Fandi. Wow, this, this story makes me so angry. So, so angry. And I suspect you are not alone. The oh. vibe I get from the Fandi family... I think is, they feel the same way. They're not very happy either. Tell them what so happened. So, Ilhan Fandi... One of the three, four sons of uh, Fandi Yamat, and uh, and a lot of them say that he is probably the most talented of, of all the sons. Yeah, he represents Singapore for the AFF Cup. Did very well at the start, you know, scored goals, but you know, um, and then and then actually doing playing very well, even as a lone striker. He gets up to chase for a ball, and then suddenly he files down, uh, clutching his knee. All of us like, oh no. So against against Vietnam and then also this this is terrible. This 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 doesn't look good at all. And sure enough, on the artificial Jalan Bursa stadium pitch, he tears his ACL completely. Shocking injury. Shocking injury. This is you know ACL injuries are always long, long term injuries. He's out six to nine months. Just as he has signed for a Belgium second division side and was all set, all happy, all ready to go. For to Europe to further his career, now this injury setback caused by a pitch that is artificially, and uh, and because FAS couldn't use the national stadium because of the AFF Cup clashes with Jay Chow concert. It's it's it's, oh, you, I'm grey enough, but you pull out your hair. This is such the symbolism is almost too obvious. 
you know, he's got this dream move to Belgium. This is like a bit Disneyland move. So he's effectively going to a Belgian Disneyland, but our Mickey Mouse setup <laughs> causes him to, to completely break down with a completely avoidable injury. Yep. It's an avoidable injury. That's, but that's what makes me absolutely furious. The, the artificial surface is too hard. It's too firm. It's terrible on knees. Every doctor, every uh, physio, anybody in sports science will tell you artificial services are no good for knees. That is why professional footballers hate them. Yep. They're not going to say that here because they have to protect their rice bowl and they're too polite. But no professional athlete wants to play on an artificial pitch. And every AFF Cup, all the head coaches have complained. Who came to Singapore to play? Vietnam and Myanmar head coaches have complained about playing on artificial surfaces. And you know, and we get it because if, if let's say you want to put, put on a... Uh, natural surfaces, you've got a, a lot of consideration. The, the pitch might get muddy and the thing's not playable during the rainy season or whatever. But at the at what price are you putting uh, the artificial pitches on? You, you, Iksan, don't forget, Iksan Fandi and Adam Swandi were injured on that same pitch before the AFF Cup. And that hampered our chances uh, of advancing already. And then now, Ilhan Fandi. Another great big hope for Singapore. You know, yeah, we have already talked about, you know, we already lack of talents. Right? These, yeah, yeah. these three talents are, are young and, and very promising. And now they've all gone down with serious, serious knee injuries. I saw Iksan, I saw Adam wearing crutches and wearing a cast mm. walking at the, at the stadium during the AFF Cup. Unbelievable. And don't, yeah. and don't give me this tropical climate argument, please. We have been playing football since the Malaysia Cup in the 1920s on bogs and swamps and so on, and we still completed the matches. That's point one. Point two, you know, the, the science involved now with the grass and the, the technology and all these, yeah. you know, these experts who work in that field. I lived in Manchester for three years. In Manchester, you have Always two rain. seasons. Rainy and not June and raining. <laughs> That's it. June and raining. It rains every day, all year in Manchester, and their pitches look like carpets. Now, I know they're using undersoil heating and state-of-the-art technology. I'm not suggesting we can afford that. But please don't tell me we cannot maintain 10 pitches. That's all we're talking about for each of the Singapore Premier League clubs. Yeah. And in the case of the national team, two pitches, the Sports Hub and Jalan Basar. Yeah. We can't maintain with all our green tech and all our tech experts that are out there in Fusionopolis doing God knows what. They can't maintain two football pitches. Those techno and entrepreneurs, I call on you all to make this happen. Yeah. Tear build up the, the artificial turf. The, tear up the artificial turf. Build proper, efficient grass surfaces for our footballers to play on. Techno entrepreneurs, make the move, man. Make the move, man. No <laughs> more ACL breaks, please. please All right, please, finally, man. Young Lions getting foreign talents again. Again. Tell us about I this mean, one. They, they've done it before. They brought in some foreign talents to help, you know, at least provide some, some veteran advice and maybe presence on the pitch, you know. Give, a bit, give, give the players a bit of a role models to, to, to look up to when they play. Because, you no know, the thing is, the thing about the current setup is if you have all youngsters, they only look up, they look up to the peers, but the peers also not experienced in doing the, going through a, a full SPL season. So, so you know, that's how, that's why they struggle. They, after, they always start off very well in the season. And then in the middle part, they just keep lo losing and losing mm. and losing because they're not used to spacing themselves up, preparing themselves for the full season. Having some, uh, veterans, uh, for veterans in will help you know, get it, tidying them through. But the problem is now you are getting not local players; you are getting foreign players. So you are wondering whether the if the foreign players do doing so well, and then they will take a place or two off of the young players or not. And if they're that good, they'll leave. So there'll be yeah. no continuity. No. You might get one good foreign player come in, do a job. If he's not that good. How does it help? Mm. If he is good, he'll He's leave. Good. He'll, he'll leave. go to Malaysia or Thailand at the end of the season. So there's no continuity. There's no consistency. And this model of having young players working with more senior players is the model Singapore had before with the S League and the Singapore, before we had the yeah. Young Lions. Yeah. So it, if this is the way the Young Lions is going, then I'm not 
really sure of its purpose mm. because then you could make that argument, just take the, the squad of the young lines as it is now and split Straight them up out, yeah. and, and fortify the existing Premier League clubs. Okay, at this point, let's try anything. Anything's better than nothing at the moment yeah, because I that's mean, where we are. So it, give it a go, I suppose. Mm. But I don't know. You bring in a foreigner, you pay him 10K. He leaves after a season. How I don't know. I, I just don't really it's like, see. It's like a traveling professor for for university. Yeah, exactly. Like that. That's a good you know, analogy. Come in, come in. I, I'll give you all the advice, and I, I, oh, somebody, some other university pays me more. Thank you. Well, Bye. not better. That one I got to give to the. the uh, that's a good analogy uh, because and I'll take it a step further. That's brilliant. You don't just bring in the occasional visiting professors. You put the money in and you build the damn university. You build the university and you fill it with your own professors, and it takes time. Yes, and then you get the production line of talent moving. Yeah. Not just this stopgap, plug hole, plug hole. Yeah. It's, it's a band-aid. It's got band -aid. to be complemented by a lot. Yeah, right? it's a band-aid. Yeah, so, yes, it's a stepping stone. Yeah. Grassroots, more investment, more pitches, accessible to the public, get more Chinese players to play. And then foreign in, foreign players in young life. Complement it. Yeah. See, we've solved it already. 20 minutes, we've solved all the problems, all right? So come to Show us. Show us the money. Show us the money. <laughs> Send us your comments, your suggestions, your job offers. Two, <laughs> Yahoo Southeast Asia on YouTube, Yahoo SG, Yahoo underscore MY on Twitter, and Yahoo SEA on TikTok. There you go. Yep. So this week we're fixed local football. Yep. Next week we'll try West Ham. Impossible Whoa. job. That's the impossible <laughs> job, right? Right. That's okay. I won't say anything. <laughs> oh, or Liverpool. Or Liverpool. Yeah. yeah. So see you yeah. again. Same yeah. time, same place next Happy week. Happy Chinese New Year. Oh, yes. Gong Si Fa Tai. Gong Si Fa Tai. Take right. care.